Good day. Minian with you here. In this video, we have assumed that you already know, or, already have the basic knowledge in parametric modeling with a CAD application. If you are just beginning, you can still follow the video with use of the pause, play button, and slow, stop motion features in your player. There is a subtitle below provided for your reference, and narration by yours truly. In this way, you may be able to create or make the model featured here and in our other videos. We hope that you will enjoy watching this video, as much as we did making it. Please don't forget to subscribe, and click on the like button below. Thank you very much. The House Mouse Team, good day to all my subscribers. In this session, we begin to make this model for the project Simple Engine. We will start by making a new part with template set to millimeters. Now that we're on screen we will start with a sketch and select the XY plane so we will face right. Create a line, make it center, and make it a construction line. Create another line perpendicular to the first line. We will extend it to about 50 mm for the length. The piston will be 100 mm in diameter. We will set this arbitrarily. This one. From here. To here. Dimension it to 50 millimeters. Now, make the piston ring seats. Dimension this line, to 2 mm. Dimension this line, and select the first dimension to make it the same. Dimension this line, and select the first dimension to make it the same. For the oil ring, dimension the thickness to 3 mm. Select this one and dimension this one from here, to here. I will move this further, and dimension the distance between each piston wing seats. And dimension each with a separation of 2 mm. Then the dimension distance from the piston ring to the oil ring will be 4 mm. Now that the dimensions are in place,
the lines will be moving at the same time in synchronicity. Turn on this, back again. Next, design an indention on top of the piston. Make another line opposite to the first line. And then we will make it equal. Place a point and make a dimension. Make another point on the opposite and dimension the point from the center, and then, make it equal to the other dimension. Select arc, and then, make a point from one side. And then, pull it down to create the arc. We will arbitrarily determine the arc's radius. Split the arc at the center. And then set the radius. Select this line. And convert it to a construction line. Split the other line. And then convert the construction line to a solid line. This will be the part that we will use, to perform a cut revolve operation on the solid. Next we will design the inside of the piston. We will create a line horizontally. Down vertically horizontal again and then, down to the end of the piston form. Split this one once more. And convert it to a construction line. Select the vertical line, and the other vertical line to make a dimension. The dimension will be 3 mm, for the thickness of the piston skirts. Adjust this line, and move it upward to this point. Fill at this corner to 8 mm. Move this line out, toward the center. Move this line closer to the top. On this corner, we fill it to 4 mm, on the opposite line, we fill it this one to 4 mm too. Split this line again. And convert this part to a construction line. Convert this line to a solid line, so we may be able to perform a revolve operation on the sketch. Now that the form is finished, we exit the sketch. Perform a revolve operation, by selecting this tab on the ribbon. Make a revolve operation, only up to, 180 degrees. Select this profile. Then select this axis, and click OK. However, we want this revolve operation on the other side of the plane, so we select this button. And there it goes. This is where you select that button. Now, we made a 180 degrees revolve operation on the sketch, to create this solid, cut the piston ring seats, with the same sketch, that is shared. Select the revolve operation tab, on the ribbon. Click on the cut operation. And select the four profiles, for the piston ring seats. Select the axis, and the cut revolve operation is performed. We don't need a full revolve for the cut operation, so we will adjust this to only 180 degrees up. Then select OK, to perform the cut.
we need something to cut the inside. So we select the thicken offset button, on the ribbon, and select surface. Then for the distance, we select zero. On the solid, select the inside face of the model. A surface is then created. This surface will cut anything, from the inside of this model. Any excess modeling operation will be removed by the surface. From the dividing plane, create a sketch on the solid surface. Create the center line. And attach the center line to the origin. Make a circle for the wrist pin. The diameter will be 28 millimeters. Project the geometry from this point, as reference for the circle's position. The hole for the wrist pin, will not interfere, or cut through the piston ring seats. The circle is almost touching the projected geometry. Move the circle lower, to clear the reference geometry projected, from the piston ring. This distance, will already be enough. On the circle, select offset, from the ribbon. And, extend this offset to 10 millimeters. Create a line tangent going up, and then, another line perpendicular to the last line, going to the right. Continue the line down, to the other side of the circle and snap it tangent on the opposite side. Switch off the surface visibility, to have a clearer view of the solid. Click the trim operation button, on the ribbon. And then remove any line that we don't need on the sketch. The Yugo. Click at the extrude button, on the ribbon above, and select the sketch profile. Click on the opposite plane, and extrude it in excess of the piston's boundary. The extrude operation is set to cut. Set it to solid. Select the new solid button, so the extrusion will become a separate solid. Press OK, and then, a new solid is created. Now we have two solid bodies on the browser. Turn on the visibility of the surface, so we can trim the last solid, without affecting the first solid. Now we turn off the visibility of the first solid, to view only one solid, along with the surface. Select split from the ribbon. Then we select the surface, and subsequently select the only solid and press OK. However the solid was cut on the other side. So we undo the operation, select the solid, and check the direction arrow what side of the part it will cut. Select the opposite plane, and verify, that the arrow is pointing on the side it will remove. Then press OK. Now the solid was trimmed as we expected. At this point, we turn off the visibility of the surface. And verify the solid form. Select the surface, and project the circle. Select the extrude button and the cylindrical surface is created. Verify that we have two surface bodies. Now, we will create the contour on the solid. Select the plane, to make the sketch for the contour. Create a line, to make a cut, from the center of the circle or a little bit higher. Create another line down, and move it diagonally, and from the end. Another line that goes down vertically. Create a line horizontally, at the edge of the solid, and another line going vertically, up 
to the end of the first line. Then press F7 to view the cross section of the solid where our sketch is. Check the contours if it is the way that we want it to be. This horizontal line will be adjusted and moved close to the center of the hole. It would be best if we further move the horizontal line lower from the center point of the hole. Adjust the other lines to make it look accordingly as we expected. After everything looks fine, create another line going up and then to the right horizontally. Trim the excess line below. Further trim the excess line on the other side, outside the solid. We connect one line to the end of the other line above. Dimension the thickness of our cut from the edge of the solid. We now project a geometry from the solid as our dimension reference. Move the diagonal line higher. and trim the excess line and connect one point to the other. Now we see the form according to our expectation. Furthermore, pull down the line, halfway, and adjust the vertical line. Pull the end of the diagonal line lower. Now we have, the form to cut. Adjust the distance of the lines, to make it close enough to the solid. And create fillets at each end of the diagonal line. The fillet sizes are adjusted to 12 mm. Fill at the other end, and set the size equal to the other fillet. Further manipulate the sketch, according to design expectations. Now, we have the form close to what we expected. Select the extrude operation from the ribbon, and cut the form on both sides. However, the cut was only performed on one side. This is because we did not select the symmetric button for the cut. Reselect the extrusion, and then, select the symmetric button, to affect both sides of the solid. Furthermore on the symmetric button, the distance of the cut would only be half on one side. So, we increase the distance to compensate the other side of the cut. Select OK. Now, we have the solid form, as we expected. Create a slot inside the hole, for the sear clip to hold the wrist pin. Create an axis on the hole center, and then select the edge of the solid, 
for the plane reference, the plane is created horizontally. On that plane, we create the sketch that will perform the revolve cut around the whole edge for the circle. Go to the top view, and then press F7, to section a solid on the plane. Make a rectangle from the center, to the edge of the hole, deep enough to fit the circle lip. The diameter of the cut will be 18 mm, and the thickness of the cut will be 1.5 mm. Dimension the position of the cut, relative to the origin center of the solid. Further adjust the diameter of the cut, to 16 mm. Snap the edge of the rectangle to the projected center line. Turn off the work plane visibility. Select the revolve cut on the ribbon, and select the profile which is the rectangle. Now it's showing us, how the cut will be done. Since everything seems to be OK, click on the OK button to perform the cut. The cut to fit the circlet, has been created. On this part, create a very small fillet at the edge, to prepare, for the combine operation later, the size of the fillet will be 1.5 mm. It should be small and blunt like your ding a ling. Apply material on the solid, and select aluminum 6061. On the material selection menu, go to the view button on the ribbon, and click on the lights selection button, and select two lights from the drop down menu. Now, the aluminum material applied, looks better, in a different light. Select the entire part, and apply the cast aluminum material. Turn on the visibility for the other solid, and verify, that the material was applied, on this other solid. On the ribbon, select Combine, select the two solids from the browser, then press OK. Now that it is combined, we can create a fillet on the inside edge of the piston. Try manually to set the dimension of the fillet by pulling on the arrow. At this point, we have determined that 2.75 mm will be the maximum. Press OK. Create an axis center on the hole. Create a point, relative to the plane selected. Create a sketch on that plane.
create a line from the point going down. This line, will be the length of the connecting rod's center to center dimension. The length will be initially 150 mm, from center to center on the connecting rod. On the ribbon, select the center point arc, and make an arc towards the edge of the piston. This arc, will be the clearance distance, from the piston, to the crankshaft, at bottom dead center, or BDC. Adjust the arc, so it will not hit the wrist pin hole. Since the arc position does not conform to our requirements, we will make further adjustments on the length of the piston, to compensate for the cut distance to be performed later on the piston. The far end of the crankshaft, will be 120 mm. In this case, make further adjustments on the form. Extrude the arc, and select the surface button, and the profile. Extrude the surface symmetrically, to cover the cut on the piston. With only one solid, select the split button on the ribbon, and select the surface for the cut. Then select the default solid. Check the arrow direction, to where the cut will be. The arrows are pointing on the part that will be removed. Press the OK button, and the part is trimmed. Turn off the surface visibility. Cut a hole, right through the cylinder wall. Since the surface was created earlier, we will turn on that surface to cut a hole on the piston wall. Select the split from the ribbon. Then select the surface, and the solid, which is the piston. After the split operation, turn off the visibility of the surface. Make a trim on the side of the piston, by cutting a rectangle on this plane. Press the F7 button to show us the cross section, where sketch plane is. Create a rectangle, and set it to cut the side of the piston.
Select the model extrude button again, and select the rectangle profile. Then select the symmetric button, and adjust the cut to be performed. Have some fillets on the top, and bottom edge of the cut. The fillet size will be 1.5mm which is more than sufficient for this part. Manipulate the surface of this model to apply the proper materials. Please bear, as the materials are applied. This part will be mostly trial and error, until the proper materials are on the right surface of the piston. Sometimes it can be so frustrating, selecting small surfaces, just to apply the proper materials on that surface. These materials are required, so that any machinist would know that this part of the surface would go to a machining process, while the cast material will be left untouched. If you did it the right way, your machinist will be happy, just staring at your model, as it tumbles around in virtual space. Moreover if you properly apply the materials on the surface, it will add realism to the model. There is also another approach on applying materials to this model. If we would go back in time, on the browser, and apply materials earlier, that materials will be carried over on the next modeling operation. Try to go back to the previous model, and apply the materials earlier, and see how it propagates towards the end of the model building. You can apply materials, on the extrusion operation, of the solid. Towards the end, materials will be applied on the cut operations, and on the other surfaces.
After applying materials on the model, mirror this model to form the other half of the piston. Go back again to the 3D model, in the ribbon, and we select the mirror operation to create the other half of the piston. On the mirror menu, select the open edge of the piston as a center plane, and then select solid, to copy the whole solid to the other side. The piston is complete, and the next step is to save this piston. The model looks good. Save your work. And close the application window. On the next video, we will be making the cylinder block, with Grumpy Willow, and then, the connecting rod, crankshaft, and assembly. Please don't forget to subscribe and click on the like button below. Thank you very much for watching.